do you think that their kind of, let's say their newfound economic greatness or their perceived greatness post-financial crisis, they always believed they were kind of a, 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 a second-rate power financially going into 2008. And the world seems to believe that they, they were the engine of the world's uh, growth from 2009, 2018. Is it, is it that economic growth that they build their geopolitical assertiveness on, in your opinion? Listen, I think it's the, you know, f since time of memorial, the, the uh, access to the Chinese market, kind of this mystery of the Chinese market has always drawn in the West, right? Whether it's the British coming there at first with the East India Company or later the, the, the China, you know, the China um, uh, schooners from the, from the United States, right? The China trade. It was always this thing about China. Uh, what we've seen, and I happen to believe that the Chinese economic system is built on a house of sand. And I think it's going to lead us to a greater financial debacle than 2008 ever was in the same culprits, the exact same culprits that led to the financial crisis in 2008, the investment banks, the commercial banks, the hedge funds, the government entities, right? The same elites that led to that financial crisis and got bailed out and had no responsibility, no accountability, have been the same exact actors that have exacerbated the situation in China. And so, yes, the reason the world's elites, the party of Davos, the people on Wall Street, uh, what I call the IR departments of China, which are the investment banks, particularly Goldman Sachs and some commercial banks, the lobbyists for China, which is the, the basically the 25 or 30 largest corporations that deal in China today. They're, they're lobbyists in Washington, D.C. These are all, all and by the big private equity guys like Schwarzman, these guys, they're all going to have to be held accountable for what went on in China. What China was able to do in, in basically coordination with the elites in the West was deindustrialize uh, the industrial democracies of the West, both Europe and the United States. That's why Brexit and 2016 are inextricably linked. Mm. What it is is the exporting of Chinese overcapacity and Chinese deflation in basic industrial goods. And so China has, and, and from the Chinese point of view, it's been quite brilliant. They've essentially taken... 350 million of their people from kind of working poverty to middle class mm -hmm. and 400 million people from abject poverty to working poverty. So essentially two thirds of their, of their population, because their population I really think is closer to 1.3 or 1.4 billion than what they say in 1.1. So what they've done is heroic in 30 years, okay, from, from, a, from a strategy point of view. But that has been uh, exacerbated by the elites in the West who basically kind of financed it and, and brought it along.